Okay, it's 6 o'clock. We'll go ahead and call to order the Brandon City Council meeting of February 1st at 6 p.m. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. Welcome, everyone. Christina, can you call the roll? Clark? Here. David? Here. Fish? Here. Jorgensen? Here. Cole? Here. Parliament? Here. Mayor Lumber? Here. I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Second. Motion and second to approve the agenda as presented. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We have three sets of minutes to approve. Minutes of January 14th, 18th, two meetings on January 18th. I entertain a motion to approve as presented. Second. Motion and second to approve the three sets of minutes as presented. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bills and claims submitted with the agenda in the amount of $570,550.20. I'd entertain a motion to approve as presented. Second. Motion is second to approve the bills and claims as submitted with the agenda. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item number six, we have on the consent calendar three plats to approve. I entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. Motion is second to approve the ca consent calendar as presented. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Community input. Anyone wishing to address the council may do so at this time. <laughs> TJ Cameron, 2821 East Daybreak Circle, Brandon, South Dakota. Um, I came this evening uh, to express my concern um, for the way that my tax dollars are being handled and allocated and to provide some feedback to the city leadership on perceptions that exist about the efficiency of how such matters are being addressed from this board and to also provide some positive suggestions. So the current matter of course at hand is losing our chief of police after just two years. The city passed on a well-qualified internal candidate with dec decades of experience in this community in search of a different candidate that was also well qualified to lead this department into the future. It's clear from the esteemed Chief Weir's letter that we did not back the direction and guidance that such a well qualified external candidate provided that we went to bat for and selected as a leadership group. It appears so much so that it led to Mr. Weir's resignation. The collective issue of compensation in general for our police and city employees as a whole along with such other working facilities and equipments is another matter. I noted comments regarding the pay proposal being rushed through last, the last meeting of the year. Well, it's my opinion or suggestion that the council or mayor could have provided clear direction to our staff along with a timeline and appropriate resources to address this and any other matter well in advance rather than reacting to a proposal that somebody on our staff took the initiative to create and present that only to be rejected and waste of time. Um, another matter is the divided council. A few chuckles led to a verbal lashing by Mr. Lundberg regarding the humor perceived by the group that the council couldn't agree. I find it refreshing personally, along with many people I've spoke to, to see our council engage in productive debate rather than generic votes that brush issues through immediately. So for that, I commend you for your productive debate. Mr. Lundberg, if you seek a unified vote, then lead influence and encourage collaboration in advance of matters rather than shaming productive debate, and in my opinion, intimidating some that choose to express their views that may not be popular with you. It's a perception that you use their productive debate shaming as an excuse to vote down the measure when your role really is a tiebreaker. Some pos now to move on to some positive suggestions rather than just complaints. While we're evaluating things such as pay, I would encourage you to think as business owners of our tax dollars. Many of you are business owners. You know, things that we could evaluate rather than just a full-on pay increase across the board is maybe we evaluate 
do we have the proper head count? I'm not talking about cuts, but I'm talking about quality versus quantity. Um, as an example, a well-compensated, highly skilled, and well-equipped force. The cost of turnover is enormous, and if we continue to farm police from our force into other police forces, it's going to cost us just as much as if we invested in the future and the proper equipment and facilities and pay for such officers in our community that would stay as long as people like uh, Wade did, very long time, and Chief Cole as well. So I would encourage us to look at the overall picture versus just the dollars in compensation. We can't continue to pay people a fraction of what nearby communities are gonna pay or we're just going to farm them out to other communities. Now that doesn't mean a blanket pay raise is appropriate, but take a look at things such as headcount. Do we have the right headcount? And I'm not saying cut a job, but what I'm saying is, could we handle things such as turnover in attrition rather than cuts? Look at the bigger picture versus just, you know, do we give a blanket pay increase or don't we? And it's not just the police force. You know, our city staff, I've been at meeting after meeting in the past, hearing about talks of 25 or 50 cents an hour when we're far off from what nearby communities pay. And it surprises me that we don't lose more of our other city employees to communities as well. I think they work here because they love Brandon. But there are, there are other creative ways that we can compensate our employees, such as paid time off, um, more flexible work schedules, if we can't afford it in the budget. But also, I think headcount is a very big piece of that. We also need to look at the quality of facilities. We're going to have to invest in the proper facilities. Clearly, from what's going on here, we're losing a very esteemed and qualified chief of police that we all backed as a leadership group to lead us into the future and then didn't back his direction or his opinions or suggestions. I don't know what happened behind closed doors, but as I said at the beginning, I'm here to share perceptions of what myself and some others see from the outside. We know it's difficult for what you do here and for that I appreciate it and respect. I've always tried to be on this team and I'd love to be on this team in the future and I know it's not easy and I don't expect any one of you to, you know, be disrespected or feel like you're not doing your jobs, but I really think a couple of things that we need to do is get ahead of these matters, provide the proper direction. Christina, thank you for putting that proposal together. It's unfortunate that it was shot down. It may or may not have been the right direction, but we probably should have provided clear direction five or six months ago on this project. You know, I've heard compensation come up multiple times, and if we provide direction, guidance, and say, Christina, we expect this, this, and this, by these timelines, we'd like you to check in this time, this time, and this time, by the time we get to the meeting, we probably would have a unified vote, because we'd have done all the due diligence in advance versus just, you know, having somebody take the initiative to do it just to be shot down. So um, I'm here. I'd always be willing to help as an advisor or, or a citizen or a resident that's concerned and would like to provide positive suggestions, but quite frankly, I'm very displeased with the matters of, that are currently going on, and I wanted to express my opinion. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Superintendent Larson, I think you're up, whether you want to be or not. All right, well, thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to, to be here with you this evening. I just want to take a, take a couple brief moments of your time to share a special project that uh, the Brandon Valley School District is currently working on. And uh, we appreciate the partnership of the municipalities within our district uh, as, we, uh, as we promote our project. Uh, the title of our project is One District, One Book. I would note that uh, in front of you, I have provided you a copy of, uh, copy of that book for your review, and then also some basic information about uh, the timeline of that project. Reader's Digest version. Are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean? Life can be extremely challenging, extremely stressful, and extremely difficult, uh, as the book would entail, much like a pot of hot boiling water. So, how do you react to the environment around you? Are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean? A carrot weakens, gets soft. An egg becomes hard and brittle, not accepting the environment. Or you can be like the coffee bean, transforming the environment around you into something positive, making the environment better for all those around you for what you serve. So, what I would tell you is that our project, One District, One Book, really focuses on the importance of reading and the connectedness amongst our community. I will tell you that uh, the school district, as well as the municipalities within the school district, um, are being involved, as well as families and businesses within our, uh, within our community. I'm proud to tell you that 
uh, all proceeds that uh, happen to arise because of of the project will go to the Brandon Area Community Foundation. Because as you are well aware, uh, the Community Foundation works extremely hard within our community to provide a brighter tomorrow. So it really fit quite well. I would like to give a shout out uh, to Scooter's Coffee and Kingbird Coffee, both in the municip municipality of Brandon. Uh, on February 11th will be the Lynxway Coffee Bean Day, as proclaimed by uh, our Honorable Mayor and those businesses are going to donate a, donate a portion of their food and drink sales to the Brandon Area Community Foundation. In addition to that, Sunshine Foods um, has indicated that they're going to participate in the project. So at this point in time, what we're looking for is our various business owners uh, throughout the district to basically display the message on their, on their board to help spread the message of, of the coffee bean. I would tell you that on Wednesday, February 10th, on our Alliance Lynx television channel. There will be a community message uh, for all to hear. Uh, it will involve our high, school, our high school students as well as Damon West, who is the co-author of The Coffee Bean, um, for, for our, for our uh, community to see and observe. Uh, so I'd ask you, are you a carrot, an egg, or a coffee bean? I would certainly encourage you and all of the patrons of our school district to be coffee beans as we help our kids transform the environment around them, no matter how stressful, into a positive place uh, for folks. So, Mayor Lundberg, certainly appreciate your cooperation and help with the project. Thank you. You bet. Very good. With that, uh, I would like to read the following proclamation that I am going to make for February 11th. Whereas it is a responsibility for all to promote a positive learning environment to prepare our children to be productive citizens, and whereas connectedness, cooperation amongst our members of our community is vital, and whereas the power of a smile, kindness, and positive energy have the ability to impact the world in which we live, and whereas together we lift one another through intentional acts and generate emotional well-being through education, involvement, and community service, and whereas the City of Brandon recognizes the value and the effort of our students, staff, families, patron, and patrons of the Brandon Valley School District and the Brandon Community Foundation and their intentional efforts to transform our community environment in a positive way and build a brighter future, then therefore be it resolved that I, Paul Lundberg, Mayor of the City of Brandon, do hereby proclaim February 11th, 2021 as the Lynx Way Coffee Bean Day. Very good, Jared. Thanks for all you do. Anyone else from the community have any comments you'd like to address the board with? Hearing none, we'll move on to our regular agenda. Uh, public hearing on a one-day alcoholic beverage license for the Brandon Valley Hockey Association <coughs> special event on June 20th, 2021, in, located in McCarty Park. Any questions on the administration or... Problems? Nope. nope. Uh, I think the representative from the Hockey Association is here. Hi, I'm Denise Poncelet, and this is Sarah Rasmussen. We, our event is targeted to be a family event. We're um, looking at bouncy houses, music, games, um, a pork cook-off, a contest for that. Um, just kind of making it a fun. It's Father's Day. Thought maybe the guys, since they like to smoke meat and stuff like that, would want to get involved. So we're just kind of looking at making it a fun community event and just thought we would see if, you know, if that was an option. Located at McCarty Park, um, if we were allowed a preference, um, the, the ice rink is obviously on the opposite side of the park part where the restrooms are, but um, if there was an option to utilize that site where the restrooms are, that would be ideal. Um, but we know there's that big parking lot where the rink is as well. And then I know uh, they've had it in the back there too, um, like where McCartney Market was, would be an option. Very good. Uh, any, uh, I'd entertain a motion on the part of the council to approve. I'll uh, move to approve. I'll second. Motion and second to approve the one day alcohol beverage license on June 20th, 2021 by the Brandon Valley Hockey Association. Any questions or comments by the board? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 
Christina, you call the roll, please. Clark? Nay. David? Nay. Fish? Nay. Jorgensen? Aye. Cole? Aye. Parliament? Aye. 3-3. Three, three. Yes. Motion proves. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Uh, number two, we have a transfer of a retail on off sale malt beverage license and South Dakota Farm wine license from Happy Jacks to Dakota Star Casino number two. Your motion to approve that. Second. <laughs> motion and second to approve the transfer of off sale malt beverage license from Happy Jacks to Dakota Star Casino two. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Along the same lines, the transfer of a on sale wine and cider license from Happy Jacks to also to Dakota Star Casino number two and entertain a motion. Second. Motion and second to approve the transfer of the wine and cider license from Happy Jacks to Dakota Star Casino number two. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Moving on to committee reports. Uh, golf course, we have a wage adjustment for Ker Kelly Eilers to $29.62 an hour. Entertain a motion to approve. <coughs> Motion is second to approve the wage adjustment for Kelly Eilers to 2962 an hour. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Golf course bank stab stabilization project. Tammy? Um, if you remember the, the golf course banks along the Split Rock Creek were damaged in the flood in 2019. We have been working pretty close with FEMA to get this approved and get some funding sources so that we can repair it. Um, we paid Clark Engineering to put together the design uh, bid set. We bid it out. We do have a contractor on board. Contractors on site has already bought materials. Started putting in erosion control today and removed some trees. Um, we do not have final approval from FEMA yet, but we are on crunch time on if we're actually going to get this done. This project will take 30 to 40 days, and we need to do it while it's cold. Um, we also need them to get in and get out because we have the water tower project that's going to be starting up too, and they're in the same location. So we are requesting that we are able to move ahead on this project um, with or without FEMA funding. That's just we've already approved the project. It's just approving it now with the... Uh, with Not the for sure of funding from FEMA. Right. Is there a motion to uh, do that? Can I ask a question quick? Okay. Uh, Tammy, uh, not holding you to this, but um, what's your what's your feeling on on FEMA? What what percent? Approval. Does your heart tell you? <laughs> Putting you on the spot here, but but I won't hold it. Hold you to it. We have met all of their asks. Mm -hmm. We've moved things around. We're waiting for their final review again. Um, I really don't see how they could tell us no, but I think they're going to try to find some kind of a loophole to tell us no. And they have been very clear about we should not start the project until we get the final approval. So I don't want to say that they could still have funding because they might say no if we start this. A lot of that was to, they wanted to wait on the 404 permit and we got the 404 permit last week. It was approved. So that's been signed off. That was forwarded to FEMA on Friday. I told them we were starting the project on Monday and I didn't hear back from them. So the Either way, the project needs to be done. I do have some pictures of the bank, and they're pretty. Banks are falling apart. There's one of them, and that took a large chunk out of it. 
up on the TV. And then uh, this would be another another one. So the banks are failing. Yeah, that's that timber retaining wall that's failing that we're replacing with a sheet piling. I don't see that we have a choice. Otherwise, it'll have to wait another year. I'd, I'd, I'd entertain a motion to uh, uh, proceed without for sure funding from FEMA. I guess, lack of a better word. Barb, you made that motion? I did. Okay, I'll second it. Motion and second to approve uh, proceeding with the golf course bank stabilization project without uh, exact funding from FEMA at this point. Any questions from the council? Another quick one. Uh, Christina, assuming that we do not get it, where does this put us on budget stuff? What do you, what are your, where are you going to move money from? Well, uh, it would be most likely general fund uh, fund balance. Most of the, I would say, all of the capital projects that we do at the golf course usually tend to come out of the general fund, fund balance. So it would be like 185000 give or take? I mean, over and above what we, uh, we're already on the hook for 10%. Right, yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, so my comment is I just, I think we're premature on this, having not finished our CIP prioritization. Um, you know, we've spent all these hours on these work sessions and are now down to the point of prioritizing what our needs are. So to start throwing money at some of these things without doing that prioritization of what we feel is going to make the cut this year. I, I, I just, I think we're, we're rushing the boat and if FEMA is telling us we should not start without approval, I think we need to heed that as well. My other concern is that when this was presented by administration to us, it was presented in the fact that we need to move it along, but we're going to wait until we get a, an answer from FEMA. And so I feel like a little misled in respect that now you're telling us, well, that might take years, so spend this taxpayer dollars on this up front. Or I would hope in the future, I ask, just tell us that three, four months ago, saying we hope we'll have a letter, but we might be coming to you in four months knowing that we might not have a yes and you're going to have a hard vote. Because I feel like you're putting us in a tough situation. I understand for those pictures that were up there, this needs to be done. But it wasn't something that was led that we had to front this much money for at this time. Other comments? No, I have concerns about it. Uh, one question I would have is if we do not do this, will the damage get greater and will the costs go up? Yeah, it'll continue to erode. It's not protected in any way. If the water comes back up or we get rainfall in the spring, it's going to continue to deteriorate. <laughs> and would the additional damage be covered by FEMA in the future? No, not unless it's a flood that's de declared by the governor. A simple high water event's not going to necessarily. Gonna... Thank you. Other questions? Christina, call the question for roll Clark. call. Nay. David? Nay. Fish? Aye. Jorgensen? Aye. Cole? Aye. Parliament? Aye. Motion carries 4 2. Thank you. We on the Parks and Rec. Uh, we have uh, pool improvements change order number three, adding two thousand four hundred seventy dollars to the project. I entertain a motion to approve. Second. Motion and second to approve change order number three as presented, increasing the project to twenty four hundred seventy dollars and ninety two cents. Any questions from council? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. We have. Uh, B3, pool improvements, pay applications number six and seven on the pool improvements project, totaling $183,276.32 to Beck and Hofer Construction. Entertain a motion to approve those pay apps. I would move to that, Mayor. <laughs> Second. 
Motion and a second to approve pay app number six and seven to Beck and Hofer as presented. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Hockey Association special event at McCarty Park on June 20th. Yeah. Pre Go back. Number four. Barb Spurlick. Oh, I'm sorry. Hiring Barb Spurlick for uh, summer rec program at $13 an hour with $400 manager bonus. I entertain a motion. Second. Motion is second to approve the hiring of Barb Spurlick at $13 an hour for summer rec program. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Now on to B5, we have uh, the Hockey Association special event in McCarty Park on June 20th. Previously, we approved the liquor license, correct, Brian? And this would just be approving correct. the this facility. Would, this would be private use of the park, and, and if we don't have any problem with moving over to the west side where the restrooms are. Is there a motion? I'll move to approve. Is there a second? Motion and a second to approve the use of McCarty Park on June 20th, 2021 for the Brandon Valley Hockey Association. Any questions? Since it's a fundraiser, are we going to waive the fee? We typically don't charge. For, for the shelter? Yeah, we typically don't. If that's what you want to add to that, we certainly can. Would be common practice that we do not yeah, charge these organizations. Any other questions? All in favor, <laughs> signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Carried. B6, the Aspen Park Road estimate. Tammy? Um, we had DGR put together some preliminary cost estimates for the different improvements um, for Aspen Park. The roadway, the Aspen Park um, paved section, that cost estimate came in at 509000 and that is to rebuild the road, meeting our current design standards. So that's two lifts of two inches of asphalt over 12 inches of base. Um, we also added in some parking areas since that was a big concern earlier. Um, last year as far as pool parking and there's some tennis courts there and widening the while well, we're narrowing the road so that we can account for some of those parking spots which this would add about 90 parking stalls to the park 90? 90 um, that next part is the Aspen Park connection and that's right at about 150,000 that is to bring the roadway from that ironwood extension all the way up to kind of that baseball um, field or that baseball parking lot right now. And then that would allow um, hockey to move their outdoor rink out there and it would also set it up for them to build their new building as well as soccer building their new building out there. The next part is the utilities. There's sanitary sewer and water that would have to go in so that hockey and soccer could use their facilities. That cost estimate is about 260000 The water would ultimately be looped into Ironwood, which would be a nice connection for the city. Um, it would help with some of our, our uh, water pressures there. If we did all three of these, that total cost estimate is right at 918000 um, we would like to bid this out yet this year, and so we're really on a tight deadline for getting that uh, design done and that bid set put together so that we can bid it probably end of March. Um, and this is in an effort to try to get that road paved before the big Legion tournament that's at the end of July. Okay. So look at that. It looks like it's running right through the, uh, uh, the car track, the RC tracks? Yeah, we're going to go around that a little bit. Um, we were hoping that uh, they would want to move that early, but they just spent a lot of money and a lot of time this last year putting it in, so they want to use that for another year. So we'll revise that just a little bit to minimize the impacts to their track. Okay. 
Hearing that, is there a desire to move forward with the project in the form of a motion? I would make a motion there. Is there a second? Is there a second? Motion and second to move forward with the uh, Aspen Park Road project as uh, Tammy delineated uh, for a total cost of uh, just over $1,011,000. Questions, comments from the council? I would just have to say again, um, we're, we're, and we did, we've done months of CIP and we haven't even prioritized our list yet. And this project, when we were talked about it you know, wasn't a million dollars. It was far from that. And it just tripled in price. And as much as I, I realize the need, it needs to be done. I, I drop, go to T-ball, softball, baseball games, five nights a week out there. But a million dollars when we still have, we all know the CIP meetings we sat through, we haven't even prioritized that. So I think it's just premature again to pass something ahead when we don't even have a priority list yet for our CIP and where the money needs to be spent. So we, we did budget 380000 for this project, and that was really for that gravel road extension and the utilities. And then as we were talking about it, he thought council wanted to move ahead with replacing that roadway. So you're right, this is above that budgeted number, but we did add to it too. So tell me, the original was, would you say it was 388? Uh, 380000 is what okay, Park Board budgeted okay. for it. Yep. And that was for from where to where? That was for the utilities for sanitary sewer and water. And that was also for the gravel connection that would make it all the way down to that ironwood connection so that hockey and soccer could move down there. And provide another way out of the park. Right. And into Eventually, the park. yeah. But this project right here does not include tying it into um, Ironwood. Not yet. Nope. So that's another project. We did do the preliminary design of Ironwood. We're working through with the property owner to um, dedicate that right of way. And after that, then we can start working on the design and getting that out to bid. But we are planning to bid that or de design that this next year and construct it 2022 or 2023, depending on CIP. So the second entrance to Aspen is very important to Park Board. So they gave up pretty much all their capital improvement budget, that 380,000 is basically what they've got available. You know, we, we would like to get the roadway improved in front of the water treatment plant, but this is more extensive. I, I do not have a position on this from Park Board, so. I guess I, I just, uh, I have been a huge proponent of, of getting the road fixed in front of the treatment plant in the pool area, because that's just, it's, we, we're way past where we need to be on that. Um, it's highly visible with, with people coming in and out of there five, sometimes seven days a week. <laughs> so to me, that absolutely needs to be done. I can't say that I think from the, baseball diamond south to Ironwood needs to be done this year. Um, as much as I want that second entrance, but I think it needs to be done at the same time Ironwood is done, so that when it's all completed, we've got that roadway all the way out. Um, I'd be 100% in favor of reducing this project so that we can at least get that roadway fixed. Uh, and, and or slash improved from uh, more or less north of the just north of the tennis courts to the entrance to the parking lot just past uh, uh, H, H Diamond I believe it is I do have a question I, I, I like Jack's idea because Christina, where would if we have three hundred eighty some thousand, where does that extra money come from that we have to pay for this road? I mean, it's a million dollar price tag. What can we actually? I mean, where does that money come from? And if we can reduce these costs, what are we able to afford? We're just pulling out two hundred fourteen for the golf course. 
how much more can you really pull out that wasn't budgeted? I, you're looking at coming out of fund balance would be your option. I don't know if there's anything else to cut in the parks department. Um, so the other, the other organizations that are affected by this, um, do we have any commitment out of any of them as far as when they would like to move forward that we would be putting a roadway in for them and utilities? Uh, we did meet with hockey. Hockey was going to have a meeting and then get back to us about when they were going to move their outdoor rink. Um, they've been talking about moving that for the last year or so. Um, I think they would really like to get it out of the floodplain and where it's at, at McCarty Park. But I can't say that there's a definite answer that they're going to do that this fall. And is it accurate, uh, Brian, that uh, it was uh, an ag agreement on the part of prior councils to provide utilities and access to a new site for that hockey association? Correct. That's accurate. Yes. Just depending on when they build it. Which when, yeah, when they build, and there's a, there's a, uh, a kickoff point if, if uh, they have to reach $1.75 million. I think it's... Uh, I think it's about 1.7, 1.75 million dollars in pledges would then kick in our obligations to build that infrastructure, the roadway and, and utilities. Have you been informed of that threshold being met yet? It has not. It has not. But they've changed their vision a little bit. Yep. And they've changed their um, their building and downsized that a lot. So they're. We work in some stuff, and we really put pressure on them last week in our meeting as you have to give us an answer of whether you're moving it this year or not. So they had intended to do that by the end of the month. Where are they at on their threshold currently? I think they're close to 750 or 800,000. It's a real challenge for Park Board because, of course, we don't want to be caught flat-footed either. And here they've got the money and the sponsors, and we're a year out to get the utilities there. So it's a real balancing act for us. But based on that, they're—I mean, that sounds like they're not even halfway to the to the their goal. The latest information we've been given, correct? <clears throat> so <clears throat> once they reach their goal, is there a commitment from us as to how much time we have to actually get it put in? No, we've had, we've had conversations with them that said, "Here's our here's our process. It takes you know take approximately this long to design, bid, and build." So we don't have a, a commitment that I can recall in that uh, agreement that says within six months, right? Okay. Tammy, what do we have it broke out here as to from for what I was proposing? Fixing the road from north of the uh, tennis courts down to the diamond or the parking lot? No. This is from almost to the entrance to that um, to those inlets all the way down past the pool. If you look on the exhibit, that gray area, that's what we would be replacing as far as the asphalt. Some of the worst area is or the worst area is like compared to probably even a little past where you're ending. Because this is the treatment plan, this is the driveway into the treatment plan. Mm -hmm. So according to that you can cut it off right in the middle of the treatment plan driveway. That makes zero sense. But um that road in my opinion, that road needs to be improved and least down to because this this has always been rough as well with people pulling in and out all the time at least past this first well down to the diamonds there or where to, you go left into the parking lot and that's what I would like to see a proposal on and you were saying that we needed to go all the way to the entrance 
That's where the old, like the older part of the asphalt starts. Yeah. All of it's in pretty rough shape, so yeah, it would be patching it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this curve and gutter from from Nicholas to roughly here, right? Right, roughly yeah. there, yep. Yeah. And that's what you're saying. Okay, we got uh, the park board wanting to replace the south end, and uh, we have council wanting to basically replace the north end here, so we're uh, no, I think, split. Uh, go ahead. I think the park board wanted the uh, um, roadway fixed in front of the treatment plant where all the potholes were. That, um, and, that the, and, and the south end. Eventually tied into Ironwood. Oh, okay, okay. I, I guess I would just like to see um, new numbers reworked, uh, and I don't know what, I mean, Christina, you know the fund balance. I mean, I feel like I'm kind of sensing everyone thinks a million is a high price tag, um, especially since we're doing CIP. So I guess I would be in favor of seeing this in two weeks, and but trying to figure out, give Tammy some sort of budget saying, okay, what can you do for like 600000 um, meaning the 380 from the park, so the additional 300, or I don't know what the what we can handle. I guess that's up to you what we can handle and take out of there. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I don't know what everyone else is. So I, um, go ahead. I got a question for Tammy. So we're going to do a bunch of slurry sealing in town this summer. What would it cost to slurry seal that section of road, get us through this tournament? It's well, got to be cheaper than rebuilding we're, it. We're doing chip seal or micro seal. We're slurry seal. Well, yeah, we call it slurry yeah. seal. You know, all that is is chip seal built up over the years, but not asphalt. We've, d we've discussed, Tammy and I have discussed uh, slurry sealing, uh, micro sealing it. We're not sure that the roadway will hold up to the machine. I had them look at the golf course parking lot last year, or the last time we did slurry seal, and they wouldn't touch it. And so this is a lot worse than that golf course parking lot, so I don't think they'd even put their equipment on it. That's a really heavy machine to put on it. Now we could do something like a fog seal, or like a chip seal, if we wanted to make it look nice. We could certainly try to patch it. We could do a fog seal, try to make it look nice, but it's not going to fix the road. So everything that we see up on the north end is in that, uh, that'd be that 509? Yes, yep. Number, and then the other two figures are for the uh, south end? Yes, the Aspen Park connection and the sanitary sewer and water. That's for the south end. Based on that, is there an appetite from the council to go ahead and proceed with the, the replacement of the road, basically the 509? Is that accurate? Is there an appetite that, for proceeding with that project? Yeah, and that's where the parking, the additional parking would be put in? I love the additional parking, but I'm um, not sure it's going to be utilized all the way out to the, oh, almost all the way out to Nichols, Nicholas. So that's why I'm thinking there. Um, I would have rather seen some dedicated parking over for the pool, you know, to the west of the road. I know that was discussed at an earlier meeting, and for some reason that wasn't going to work. But, um, I know we need more parking down there, but I think there's other places that it, it uh, could potentially be added to. Further down uh, to the south where, where the traffic parks now. Right now you get sometimes too deep out onto the grass. And, uh, maybe we need to lo look at that. But So if, uh, we, if we don't do the south side and either soccer or hockey come to us and they've raised their money and of course the sponsors are anxious to get going 
I think we've made some commitments to them that mm -hmm. we have to put that in. So, you know, we could, Absolutely. the problem will be, though, the timing. You know, how fast can you get it done? And I guess that's, that's my concern. I, it's taken them a long time to raise that money, but. We all know how that's going to work. I mean, they're going to come in and they're going to want it done yesterday. Exactly. Uh, when they get that money. That, that's just a given. We know that that's going to be the, where the ball falls. But so. we were trying to get ahead of that. That right, was our right. thought. Well, I think, yeah, we all understand that. And I think we absolutely need to be prepared for that. And one of the things that we could possibly do is in, in our CIP process is make sure that we have uh, money allocated for that extension, ironwood, and for um, the sewer and, and extending the roadway all the way through, so that as soon as they are ready, that we're ready. But then that that way, at least we have the money allocated and spoken for, let's say, um, for the project when it when it's when it, when we're due to make the improvements. Well, that's one thing, Jack, but that's the time. How fast can we do it? Do we, do we, we've committed to the design for that? Okay, so we would at least have the design in place? That would help. Mm-hmm. Explain to me, as far as the construction of it, uh, does this have to all be in place before they can start construction of their facility? Or is it something that could be they need the road in there in order to move their stuff out there in order to access the site and we don't want to be putting in the road in there if we're going to have to dig it up and put in the utilities so yes utilities would have to be in and then we could do the road then they can move out there how long have they been working so far what's the timeline that that's taken from start until today to get to seven hundred fifty thousand? But the MOU is for an indoor facility, but they really do want to move that outdoor facility there too, and they cannot do that until we get the road and the utilities in there either. So there's that's why we're, one reason why we're trying to get ahead of them too. Because they, they don't have to fundraise to get the outdoor thing out there. Okay, so they could move that once we're done. Yeah, they're gonna. That's one thing that we're going to work on here in the next couple of weeks is see what the cost is to move that because there's a cost to it. Um, and they were going to work on that, but they should be able to move that without a problem. So how, is, if we delay this by two weeks so we hopefully get a better word from hockey, is that really going to set us off really down the road if waiting and then we have another CIP meeting where we can go discuss a little farther? Uh, we would have to bid it probably in April if we push it to the next meeting. I don't know how the bid environment is going to be in April. April is kind of late to be bidding, but we can certainly take that chance. So I think we're maybe we were looking at it in the respect that we were talking about the indoor facility, which I think is quite a ways off. But if they really want to move that outdoor facility, do we want to hold them up? I guess that's the question. Is our previous commitment for the both indoor and outdoor facility, or is it just the indoor facility? No, when that, when that MOU was executed four years ago, uh, it was, we were just dealing with an indoor facility. So since then, uh, you know, the, the, rink, the outdoor rink down at McCarty Park has been flooded a couple of times, so they would really like to move that out of there. But that MOU does not address the outdoor facility. That's why the trigger point is at 175 um, to get us to move. At that point in time, like I said, we weren't, we weren't talking about an outdoor rink. I guess I'm of the opinion that we don't let the outdoor rink discussion drive this kind of an investment on, on infrastructure at this point. Is, is, what is your recommendation? Well, there's... there's uh, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Got to put a little pressure on him. Uh, it, it, the, the Aspen Park connection, the gravel road, and the sanitary sewer, we had a pretty good idea when we did the 2021 budget um, at 380000 That's what 
is included in the park budget for this year. As we moved along, the original plan for that road was to patch what needed to be patched primarily in front of the water treatment facility in time for the Legion tournament in late July, early August. Since then, discussions with the council have led us to we need to do something more with the road. That's where the Aspen Park Road reconstruction came into play. We're looking at upgrading that from, like I said, just built up seal coat to an actual roadway uh, matching our current design standards. We've talked about that with staff. I'm not, I, I originally didn't think that maybe we needed to go with 12 inches of base and 4 inches of asphalt on what is essentially a driveway for most of the time. However, if we move forward with the water treatment plant renovations, there's going to be a ton of truck traffic, heavy truck traffic on that road. So we could go back to the original plan and patch what needs to be patched, slurry seal over it, or chip seal over it. I would venture to guess, I'm not an engineer, but I would venture to guess that by the end of construction of the waste or the water treatment plant, that road will pretty much need to be replaced again. You know, so that, that would be the risk with patching and, and slurry sealing or chip sealing. This how, long did, how long does it take to build the plant? Like how a year long? and a half to two years. You know, we're, we're hopefully designed this year with construction to start in 2022, completion in 2023. So somewhere in that 18 plus months. It'd be nice if it was less, but I doubt it. 18 to 24 months to complete that. So that's the risk that the city would run. We'd be spending, I don't, I don't know how much it would cost to patch and chip seal over. We can certainly work on getting you a cost estimate for the next meeting on that. Just scaling it out um, from Jack's idea to go from the tennis courts down to the parking lot. The distance with what that is, what Jack proposes to what's included in here is pretty close. Both of them are, are between 1,000 and 1,100 linear feet. So if we were going to construct the road in the same fashion, we might save a little bit of money because the, park, the parking area would be reduced. I'm not sure how much. Um, but the, the cost would probably be pretty close to the same as what's included in this cost estimate. Might be a little less because uh, Jack's run is a little bit shorter than what's included in here. But it'd be within the same ballpark. If we want to do something and do it right, this is, this is the roadway we should build. If the council is comfortable patching, making it look pretty decent for the tournament, and then with the full understanding that in a couple years we will need to reconstruct the road, um, that's okay too. Uh, you know, another option, at some point in time if the road gets bad enough, it might be beneficial just to scarify it up and turn it into a gravel road for a while. I don't, yeah, there's there's some issues with the gravel road. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, there's dust control. There's there's rutting. We don't have the equipment to maintain a gravel road. We would need to hire that done. We don't have a blade. We don't have a grader. Um, and no, I don't think we're going to buy one, Raleigh. Um, so there's some alternatives, but we can certainly get some cost estimates to you for the next meeting. Bidding in April on a project always makes me nervous. I think everybody knows that. Much prefer to bid it uh, January, February at the latest. Um, you always run the risk of bidding it in April. We'd have a fairly short deadline. We'd want it done by July 1st, I think is what we included. So if you bid it, bid opening in April, it usually takes 30 days to get the contract signed. So now we're looking at May, and it gives them about you know a month and a half, two months to get the work done. Uh, Tammy's estimate is four weeks to do the road perfect with perfect weather, which we all know will happen. So I know I'm not giving you much of a recommendation. If you're going to build the road, my recommendation is to do it right. Uh, we've, we've spent way too much time here in the city of Brandon over the, the course of our history of patching stuff together to get us by. 
and it comes back to get us in the end. So if we're going to do it, I, I would say do the road correctly. The gravel and the sanitary sewer, if, if hockey is going to move that outdoor rink down to the south location, that would need to be done this year. If, you, if we do not do those two projects, or that, those two portions of the project, hockey would not be able to move their outdoor rink this year. Um, I guess I'd be in favor of bidding the gravel roadway and the sanitary sewer and water utilities. Um, I would also like to though, see a price on patching and chip sealing the roadway. I think it'll be cheaper than $509,000. I hope so. Um, I also think if we're going to build a water treatment plant, we're going to have trucks driving up and down a brand new road. Mm -hmm. So why not just wait and build a brand new road after the trucks are done? I don't know, that's just my thoughts. Because no matter what, even if you have a perfectly specified road, if you put that kind of truck traffic on it, it's going to be tough on it or not? It, you wouldn't, it, it shouldn't be too bad on it. The, the I guess I'll, I'll stop you there and I'll mm -hmm. say case in point, Redwood Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's an excellent question. So uh, try to move us off center jet. Well, you've, you've got a motion. a motion. I realize that. Okay. I can change it. I think I'm just going to call the question on the motion to get, get rid of that and uh, start over. Okay. Uh, the original motion is to approve this project in the amount of $1,011,500, which, uh, as we're talking through this, uh, it appears that there's no appetite to continue with that, so I'd call the question with a roll call, Christina, to hopefully do away with this motion. Clark? Nay. David? Nay. Fish? Nay. Jorgensen? Nay. Cole? No. Parliament? Nay. We have a 6-0 no vote to uh, abolish this motion. Now, do we want to direct the administration to uh, go with cost estimates, or do we want to Put it in the form of a motion to proceed with certain parts of the project. I would. I would make a motion that we go ahead and bid the gravel roadway and sanitary sewer project. Second. Are you adding to it? That back? would be the only motion. I, I guess I would direct then the city to give us the, the staff to give us numbers on what it would cost to um, patch and chip seal the roadway. Okay. So there's a motion a second to uh, proceed with the gravel roadway and the sanitary sewer portion of the project. Uh, 149 plus $260,000 cost estimates on those two projects. Uh, coming close to our original estimate of uh, budget estimate, correct? Correct. Further discussion? <clears throat> Tim, your motion. What? So... What, what are you envisioning as your direction to the staff to um, chip seal the, the entrance road, I would call it? Yeah. yeah the, the way I understood the, the suggestion was to patch the areas that need to be patched yeah. and then chip seal from Nicholas down to... Well, how far do you want to go? I mean, I it's, it's chip sealed field. all the way down to the Field A parking lot. I, I would go to the gravel. Okay. Well, not to the Field A parking lot because that's all gravel. No, to the to the end of the tree line. Right to the Field A. Where it's ground. Yeah, eight to no. Field. It's it's chip sealed even further south than that. It goes all the way down to the end of the tree line there. To the south edge of the tree to line. The, yeah. yeah, to the south edge. Yeah, you're right. And what the, co the estimate would basically be a square yard cost. Right. So we could we yeah, could give you... Quite frankly, I'm not sure if we need to go from <coughs> from the entrance into the driveway, into the parking lot, along the tree line. I don't, I don't know if that's... It's not great. I don't know. I, I, it's been a while since I... I'm not sure how it was. It. We, we'll get a, a per square yard cost estimate. Okay. So we can, we can stop it basically wherever you want to and figure out what that... 
That would be work performed by an outside contractor? Okay, any further questions? Motion on the floor is to proceed with the gravel roadway to the hockey area and ironwood connection in addition to the sanitary sewer and water utilities for that area. Christina? Clark? Aye. David? Aye. Fish? Aye. Jorgensen? Aye. Cole? Aye. Parliament? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, moving on public safety, first reading of ordinance number 621, illegal dumping and littering. Entertain a motion to approve the first reading of ordinance 621. Second. Motion to a second to approve as presented. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we have a fire department report for you that they're building their truck is being built as we speak halfway there I guess it sounded like or three quarters of the way th there item C3 we have a resignation of police chief Joe Weir <coughs> a motion to approve that uh, resignation I would make a motion to approve the resignation and uh, make it effective immediately Motion and a second to approve the resi <coughs> resignation of Police Chief Joe Weir, uh, effective immediately. Any questions, comments? Uh, yeah, I, I would question why the motion includes immediately. I believe I saw communication earlier today where he was willing to stay for a couple of weeks. I'm looking at the tone and the tenor of the uh, resignation letter. Obviously, uh, we've got a person that's very dissatisfied with being here, and I just feel that it's best for the department to uh, be able to move on. That's my opinion. I'll, I'll have to concur with Dave's opinion, too. Um, um, he's not happy, and if, if he's not happy right now, I think it's time for, for us to move on and uh, um, support that the, the guys that are sitting in the back back of the room right now, they're all curious as to what's going to happen, I'm sure. And uh, this is a way to make one um, step forward right away. Christina? Oops. I just want to say something. Um, I respect the chief's wishes, um, and I feel like I, I, I'm saddened that I had to come to this. Um, I feel he did do the best he could for his officers. I never once, and in my conversations with him, felt like he he never asked anything for himself. He wanted to make this a better community for us, and I think he has. I think um, from everything that he's done throughout the community, visibly, um, I don't know. I, I think it's it's really sad that our community is losing it, and it could have been prevented with a little more compromise and communication. Um, and I, I feel like this th didn't have to end this way, and I, I am very sad because I feel like he brought a level of expertise and experience to this community um, that was needed, and I feel like I'm just sad. Um, but I respect his wishes, but yeah. I'll echo the same comments. I think it could have been prevented and uh, I, I think he has some valid points uh, in his resignation letter particularly with with pay uh, that's something I've advocated for for years and I'll save my comments on pay until we get to that agenda item um, but I do think he was a huge asset to our community and as I understand it he was very loved and respected by uh, the officers underneath him so this this is very uh, very sad Any other questions, comments? If not, Christina, call the roll. Clark? Nay. David? Nay. Fish? Aye. Jorgensen? Aye. Cole? Aye. Parliament? Aye. Motion passes, 4-2. Yes. Okay, moving on.
on to uh, section D as in dog administration? One, one point. Um, would the council be interested in appointing an interim chief? I would make the motion that we appoint Lieutenant Steffel. Second. Motion and second to approve appoint uh, Lieutenant Jamie Steffel as interim chief of police. Any questions? Uh, what would you anticipate or how would you anticipate handling pay um, in the interim position? I haven't thought about that for... Or is that something that we can leave up to staff at this point? Or What we can do is we'll come back to the next meeting with a recommendation for uh, an increase in pay during the interim. That would be retroactive back to tomorrow. Thank you. Any other questions? Christina? Call the roll to approve Jamie Steffel as the interim chief. Clark? Aye. David? Aye. Fish? Aye. Jorgensen? Aye. Cole? Aye. Parliament? Aye. Very good. Motion carries. Sounds like somebody just got railroaded into a new job. Oh, he's okay. <laughs> uh, City Hall proposal for from ISG to evaluate the existing facilities in the amount of thirty thousand uh, dollars. Brian Tammy. Sure. Um, as we all know, we did a, ISG did a space needs study for us last year, and and that determined that the current. Uh, facility complex that we've got that combines City Hall and, and Police Department is about half the size of of what's projected for the next 20 years and the cost estimate was between 8.3 and 9.2 million dollars to construct the new City Hall complex uh, utilizing one of the floor plans that ISG came up with. Through the CIP process uh, it's certainly become evident that a new City Hall complex as much as I would like one uh, is probably not in the cards for uh, at least the short term. We've got a number of other issues that are projects that would seem to be a little bit higher on the priority scale. With that in mind, we've solicited a proposal from ISG to come in and take a look at our existing facility here. Uh, they would evaluate the structural integrity of the existing buildings as well as if they're up to code and then submit a proposal or a concept plan that uh, would include phasing for renovation or addition to this facility, including both buildings and the vacant lot to the north of the fire hall or the police station, uh, at least <coughs> as, as a stopgap temporary measure. Um, you know, I, I can't say that it's going to take us through the next 20 years, but somewhere probably between five and 10. Um, and that would at least give the council another option to, to consider instead of just uh, you know, build a new complex or, or not. I, I would like to see us put this off um, for a period of time because I don't think that we have the money right now to even do a phased kind of construction if we need to do so. Did we put some money in the budget for remodeling? We, we, have eight, we usually put about eighty to $85,000 in general government buildings for repairs. Uh, we don't anticipate using that amount this year. That's where the cost of the study would come out of. I just, I'm afraid that we're going to do the study and we're not going to be able to do anything and it's going to be outdated, et cetera, et cetera. So I am not in favor of doing this at this time. I'm not either. And if we know we want to use that lot, I mean, if we consider just asking a contractor to give us some ideas rather than another study. I I would highly recommend that if you wanted to move forward with something, we could we could certainly engage an architect to design something for us without a study, and then that thirty thousand dollars would be rolled into their architectural fee. Um, you know, Brian, the part of the part of my thought process on this is that you know we just talked about we've been patching mm -hmm. things in the city for years and and uh, it's, it's really not moving us down. I, 
I would like a little bit more time. I don't know if a build to lease type of thing is, you know, what the cost of that would be, a yearly cost. Uh, I'd kind of like to see some numbers on that. If, if it's possible to, to lease a building instead of uh, going in debt for one, um, I'd like to look at that option before we start talking about patching something that, quite frankly, is you, as you well know, and I worked in there for 11 years, and I know it's just not. I don't. I don't see. I think we're throwing good money after bad. I, yeah, I probably agree with you. That's why I said if we were to do something like this, it'd be a stopgap for five to ten years. You know, looking at it, if you're looking at an eight million dollar cost for a new complex and a 20 year lease, you're talking 400 and some thousand dollars a year. Uh, depending on, on what the profit is that the, the builder would like to have. So, you know, between 400 and 450 would kind of be my guess for an annual lease payment. Um, I just know that we're running out of room with some additions to the PD, additional staff here. You know, the alternative is that we'll probably start putting um, offices or, or cubicles in here for staff. Um, and yeah, I think that would be fine. And to be honest, and we got to think outside the box. We this is our taxpayer dollars. We had a citizen talk about that spending it. This is their money, and I feel like this is just a waste right now. Let's get to the CIP. Um, maybe talk to the school district. We can have these meetings. I mean, I don't know about everyone. We're here a couple hours a month. I'm okay if there's some other location we can have it. If the city needs the space to put cubicles up, we'll we'll do that. Um, we just got to think that this is, you know, we have to do our due diligence in regards and make sure we're making wise decisions on the taxpayer's behalf. So I would say put this off for now. It sounds like the uh, majority of the council wishes to not proceed with this project, but I will open it up and if anybody has a desire to make a motion to approve the study from ISG as presented. They do so at this time, otherwise we'll just pass on it and, and, and delay. I'll just make a comment. I'm not quite ready to move forward with it either. Um, <laughs> I think it definitely, I mean, we're in the middle of the CIP process and <clears throat> I think we all realize that we need to do something um, with PD and City Hall. What that is for sure, I think it's, uh, premature for us to 100% say we, we know what we, we need to do or want to do. So I would not be in favor of moving forward with, with this either. So I think that's a good plan. Very good. Absent of hearing a motion, I'll move forward to item D2, employee wage pay scale discussion. Brian, you were looking for some guidance. Yep, just some, some guidance um, as to what changes the council would want to see in this pay plan that's included in the packet. As we've talked about before, um, if you want to move a group of employees up or down, then we will need to revise this salary scale to reflect those changes. If you want to increase the pay for some employees, we would need to make sure that the integrity of the pay scale is, is maintained probably by expanding it from 25 lines down to maybe 30. And then we would need to go over on the right side of the pay scale that's proposed here and adjust those, um, it says PG increment, to reflect that so that, uh, you know, if we add another five lines and it's 10% in between each of those lines and we don't increase those top, uh, top end uh, positions dramatically, uh, what I would propose is that the, the pay scale actually reflect what the current 2021 pay scale is for the top end of the of the scale and then work backwards from there. But if you want to, uh, I'm just looking for direction, if you want to change one classification of employee, increase their salary or wages in some fashion, let me what, know what that is so we can plug that into the pay scale so that it, like I said, it maintains its integrity. Each of the positions in the city have a, a relevance to the other. I'm not doing a real good job of explaining that because I understand some, some council members don't quite understand that 
connection. Um, but arbitrarily moving one or two positions messes up the pay scale. Each one of those positions is relevant to another. Each one of those positions has different job duties, but you try to compare those job duties to, to them so that you can slot those positions into the appropriate pay scale. So if you want to if you want to change something, let me know what you want changed, and we can we can massage this pay structure that you see here to accommodate those changes. I just need some direction as to what what you want changed. So I had asked for uh, this topic to be added back in December, and unfortunately it had um, a delay um, getting in front of us. I wholeheartedly believe that we've just made this topic so complex that we end up doing nothing. When we try to look at it as a whole and move it as one unit, it doesn't work, and it hasn't worked. Um, there was an internal pay study in 17. There was a study done by our HR person in 18, and it had a set of parameters, and it had a heavy emphasis on minimums and comparing to peer. And then we did another study in 2020, and that had more of an emphasis on comparing maximums and uh, comparing Sioux Falls. And not there's not a one-size-fits-all answer to our departments, because in some cases, geography matters. In some cases, it doesn't. Um, but, but what pains me is, in, in all of the studies, uh, police, for example, we've, we've seen that we have an issue. We have a deficit. And because we continue to make it so complex, we kick the can down the road. And, and that's not right by, by our police force. Um, I've sat in on a lot of the last um, interviews in the last couple of years, and it's just not fair to these guys. We ask them to wear so many hats. We require these officers to be role models in our community. We expect them to be well-trained, level-headed, and tactful. They're physically fit, considerate, and fair. They're pulled in many different directions, and they have to multitask like crazy. They're expected to remain calm and utilize critical thinking in tense situations. They're articulate, understanding, and smart. They need to have thick skin, be resilient, and ethical. Some of these officers are asked to keep our community safe during long overnight shifts while we sleep. And we like that because we're one of the safest cities in South Dakota. I believe the safest for the last five years. We want the best of the best. But we haven't been willing to pay I would wager that if the public really understood our police wages, they would ask us to change them immediately. We hire a new officer for around 20 bucks an hour, and we ask them to pay 75% of their family health insurance plan, which this year I believe is over $20,000. There's hardly anything left. We've seen the studies. There's a deficiency. Um, and if anybody is curious, you know, how we compare to other cities, per capita, we are so grotesquely underspending what other cities of similar size are spending. Uh, I looked at the 2020 uh, police study that, the South Dakota, that South Dakota does every couple of years, and I looked at Huron, Madison, Mitchell, Pier, Spearfish, Vermilion, Yankton, they're all way over us. In fact, the average of those seven per capita is 215, and Brandon's at 144. We're under the average of those seven by 71 per capita. If you take our per capita number, that equates to over 700,000 that we are under if we were to just meet the average target. All we need is about 10% of that to make right by these officers. Now, I'm, I'm steering off here because I, I don't want to make this just about the officers, but we have something that's come before us repeatedly, and we do nothing. And we may have other departments like that as well. So as I had put in the packet, what I was proposing is that we stop looking at this as a whole, and we look at these departments, we involve the department heads, we figure out parameters that are and are not important to get this situation and this topic dealt with once and for all. 
I have a question then. So what you're saying, Brian, if, if I say I want police officers to start out making $23 an hour, tell me what that would look like. You're saying everybody else goes up? No, not necessarily. Uh, what you would have to do, if you, based upon this scale, it would be the police officers would move down a line to line 13 to 2284, so that's close, and it's 16 cents from $23. If you move them down, you'd also need to, it has an impact on the rest of the PD. There's a, there's a hierarchy there. Yep, I know, and then they go up, yeah. Correct, so not necessarily that they would go up. I'm not saying that, that the lieutenant or the chief or the sergeant or those would go up. I don't know that yet. They may go up. I don't see them going down. What I am saying is we would need to expand the scale to accommodate that. So then, you're saying everything below then, so the lieutenant, the chief, um, would end up, everything just kind of gets moved down. Yeah, we, we would need to move, we would need to increase or add additional lines to the pay grades from 25 to, might be 30, might be 27, and then we would need to work backwards from the top end salaries and adjust those line increases from 10% and maybe down to 8% or 7%. I don't know that yet without some input as to what you want to change. Well, one, I think it'd be nice to see where people are going at, what percent of increase is happening here. It just looks like a lot of number to, for taxpayer dollars. I mean, I just think of it, I don't think it's a one size fits all. So once somebody gets a raise, everybody gets a raise. I don't think that's how businesses are run. I don't know that's how companies. I, so I feel like, my fear when this whole thing was that you would have some people getting a significant raise while others aren't getting piddly. And I don't think that's fair either. And I don't necessarily agree with just because one does, everyone has to get one. That was my, my caution or why I didn't vote for this the first time. And the, uh, the schedule that we have here is option one, correct? Correct. We had option two that uh, we made a motion on. It got voted down. And didn't that essentially move the officer, the police detective, the police sergeant, police lieutenant down? I'd have to go back and look. I one line? So. Hmm? I believe so, yes. Yeah, all of those moved down one line. Police chief stayed the same. Uh, and then all the other, I think all the other classifications stayed the same. I didn't bring that copy with me again and if we went with something like that it it buys us a year it moves the ball forward and it's not like we don't we uh, wages are not something that you deal with one time and and we're done for all time it's a constant thing that has to be addressed uh, if we had gone ahead with that vote the last time um, that doesn't mean that we're done with the discussion. We can, it still would have given us time to evaluate and uh, uh, for the future, which we do. That's my frustration is that it would have put us uh, where a starting salary would have been 2284. A uh, detective would have been 2444 starting. And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't approved. So that's the direction I would like to see is move those back down to that option two again and reconsider it and that moves the ball down the court it doesn't solve it forever it'll be something that will be addressed time and time and time again because that's just the way wages are well, I think the issue was that it was a $90,000 ticket so it wasn't just a few positions I don't and I didn't know where the rest of them were I guess that was a $90,000 ticket we we just spent three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars additionally last year for the golf course and we didn't hardly blink an eye uh, most important you know we talk about trucks we talk about plows and cars and everything the most important commodity that we have the most important uh, people that we have are the ones that that drive the squad cars and drive the uh, uh, the snow plows and the and take care of the water and make sure our sewer works and 
everybody had a hang up about ninety thousand dollars but yet we supplement golf uh, for for people every year uh, much higher than that and I you know the ninety all ninety thousand dollars didn't just go to the police department also went to to other staff and for some reason uh, the people two people that really supported the the police wages going up and the police did uh, the police department did see the uh, the bump in that and it got voted down and here we sit again and we're talking about complicating something more than it really needs to be um, and again if we did that we then have time to take a look at the the bigger picture and see if further adjustments, future adjustments need to be made. Okay, one thing I have to say. So with this line, you're saying a police officer, but then also a public works person would also be moved to 2284? No, it would be up to the council if you wanted to just move police officers, you just move police officers. Okay, now that is something that, this is why, Dave, because they, they dangled no once we have not had the support from the administration and, and also yourself, Dave, since August for any police wages. Nothing. I, I, it just shocks me that whenever we talk about trying to do something, we had a well-proposed plan back in August or September was sent to us with a market analysis from the chief saying this is where people are getting paid, right? Like giving us good information, which I would appreciate from any department head. If Raleigh came to me, Devin came to me, I'd like that. But I feel like nobody was on board, and then all of a sudden, the last meeting of the year, it was thrown at us, kind of dangling to us, saying, well, the police officers will get an increase in police officers. And so I questioned, well, what else is getting thrown in here at our taxpayers' dollars' expense? I agree, the police officers do deserve an increase. Um, and maybe some other people do too, but right now we're looking at a lot of numbers, and I, don't, I can't make rhyme of this. Who's getting a 2% increase, or who's going to get a 6% increase? That's why I didn't vote for it, as much as I would love to see the officers and maybe some other deserving people, too, that I, I'm not all aware of need an increase in pay. It was just a lot of information to throw at us as a one-size-fits-all type of thing, and it was never presented that, no, you guys can just give the police officers an increase. I agree. I felt it was presented with very vague information, and we were told the police would get a raise, but everybody would also get a raise. And our studies have shown that not necessarily everybody needs to get a raise. So we need to address these individually, in my opinion, or, or start somewhere. I'd be happy to start somewhere. I believe the proposal on the table back in, in uh, the summer or fall was to split the difference with Sioux Falls, because these officers could, could uh, leave tomorrow and they'd have an increase in their pay of $12,480 and not have to change their residence. I believe the, the, the uh, proposal was for, for the starting wage for our police officers was to be twenty three fifty, and split the difference. I kind of come back to my my direction. What I would ask is that we uh, examine option number two again, uh, which moves the police department, the public works. I don't think the public works needs to be ignored. I look at this. I see it, I see the way that it's laid out. It makes a lot more sense than the how many lines were on the previous one? Eighty, eighty-six. And then it expanded out to 21 years, and this compresses it to 16 years and eliminates a whole, it, it just makes much more sense. And, and yes, if you're switching from the old pay scale to a new pay scale, the vast, vast majority of employees would receive a little bit of a change because we're getting rid of all of the old lines and, and steps and we're creating new ones. So when you do that, you don't, you don't make the employees go backwards. No. So if somebody's in like, uh, you know, $22 an hour and the next step is at $23 an hour and they're sitting at $22.50, 
you would plug them into the, the 23. Uh, so we would go back and take a look at individual employees where they would fit in the new scale. That's probably the difference between the 60 and the 90. I, I don't know. But we would have to go back and, and we can come back with a number. Um, so if I understand this right uh, correctly, Dave, on uh, the previous option two, uh, currently a police officer coming into the city of Brandon would make 21.34 an hour. And option two had him moving to 24.44, which was two steps down. It's at step 12 currently, and it would move down to 14. But then that hops over a police detective, so you'd have to move that down. Is that how that whole? No, the, uh, the, current, the currently, what we're at is about $20.40 oh, and this 40, is, this, 40 some cents. Yeah, this is the. Right. Under the option one, this would be that type of an increase. If we I went with option two, police officer would move down a slot, police detective was moved down a slot, police sergeant was moved down a slot, police lieutenant was moved down a slot, police chief stayed right where it was at. There was no, no right. modification of the police chief category. So it, it, it moved it moved it down. Um, so it, yeah, so it went from, uh, Twenty-one thirty-four to the twenty-two eighty-four for the entrance, uh, police officer entrance, and uh, so on. So that's that's what option two was the last time when we discussed it. Then can we get option two with people slotted in? So we know the percent of increase. So, just a second, Dave. You said that it moved from twenty-one to twenty-two eighty-four. Yeah, I just moved uh, one line down. The police officer went from uh, line twelve to line thirteen. Police okay. Detective okay. Went from. Line I'm with you. Line. I'm with you. Then delineate the individual staff members and how they're affected. Uh, what, what, we would what we would probably give the council, yeah, we would, because we'd have to. I mean, we could do it by department, but eventually, any wage adjustments or salary adjustments are going to have to be shown to the. I mean, you're going to have to approve them all anyway. Mm -hmm. but in, but I truly think that we want to see who's going to get a raise and how much. If it's a, a, a you know, they, they jump, you know, a nickel or so, uh, nobody cares. Um, but if it if it jumps them a buck or a buck and a half, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't anticipate then, that. then, you know, we may uh, have issue. Well, quite frankly, if, if they jump a buck or a buck and a half, we've got them slotted wrong. So the direction is to uh, go first. with... Option two from the previous one, and then slot everybody in there and give us before and after on everybody. Correct. Yes. That'd be great. Yeah. Have you marching orders? Yep. There's no way. Just want to make sure. There's no way because of this pay scale, we have to go from 2284 to 2444. We can't do like a 23. 23, or 2350. We, we could put all new numbers in here. That oh, okay. I just didn't know how this was all set up. Um, Don't muddy it. You can expand the lines okay. and make these six percent. Yeah, we, yeah we, what I'm saying is we would expand the lines from 25 to 27, 28, 29. Okay. And then we would go over here to that second to the last column and adjust those percentages so that there would be that big of a step in between lines. And yes, it is a complicated process. It's not something that you simply just throw stuff at the wall and hope that it works. There is, a, there is a, it, it, it can get very complicated, especially when you're going from our existing pay scale, which is 84 by 21, down to 25 by 16. It gets very complicated. And trying to address the entire compensation package for the entire city complicates it. This isn't just a, 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 a one department adjustment. There are it affects everybody. Hopefully not a lot. No, I, I don't anticipate, you know, huge well, Let's huge find changes. out. Yeah. Plug them in and let's find out. Yep. Agreed? <laughs> D3, a water tower loan amendment. It appears to me this amendment is prohibiting any telecommunications and video surveillance equipment to be placed on the new water tower. Is that accurate? Hello. Is that accurate? Did you hear what I said? No, sorry. 
my understanding of this amendment is that it prohibits the certain telecommunications and surveillance, video surveillance equipment to be placed on the new water tower? Correct. Yep. Would entertain a motion to approve as presented? Okay. Motion a second to approve the water, water tower loan amendment as presented. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item D4, we have an amendment number one to the CCOG uh, plan. Tammy? Um, previously, there was funds for the transportation plan, the bike and pedestrian plan, and then they also reimbursed some of my salary for planning purposes. Um, we, we were supposed to start these studies last year. I did not start those studies because of um, just because of COVID and I didn't want them to do uh, traffic counts because they were going to be messed up. So this is just amending the UPWP, which is the MPO's budget to these current costs. So we're still getting the same amount that was previously approved. Amending the old UPWP. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, is there a motion to approve? I'll approve the new UPWP. Second. As presented in CCOG Amendment 1. Is there a second? Second. Motion to a second to approve as presented. Uh, any further questions? All in favor signify by stating aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Under streets, uh, Rushmore area phase one sidewalk agreements for... Uh, Authorization to pursue uh, agreements for 1505 and 1509 East uh, Sylvan Circle. Tammy had those in your packet. I'd entertain a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Motion and second to authorize uh, Tammy to proceed with sidewalk agreements for 1505 and 1509 East Sylvan Circle as presented. Any questions? One quick one. This has been negotiated with the landowners, correct? Or do they know? Are they I, in the... In we've the mentioned it to the homeowners, but I haven't brought these easements towards them yet. We have some time on it, and if they say no, then we just make the curb ramps work the best we can. They're just going to look a little bit different than the rest of them. So. But you still have to put them in for ADA, though. We do still have to put them in. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Item E4, we have uh, authorization for ad to advertise for bids for uh, Surrey Seal in conjunction with the City of Sioux Falls. I entertain a motion to approve. Authorization. Second. Motion and second to approve authorization of bids for Slurry Seal in conjunction with the City of Sioux Falls. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Pretty big one I missed there. Rushmore area phase one bid. Uh, we received bids on the Rushmore project, five bidders. The low bid was from ASCO in the amount of $4,306,136. I entertain a motion to approve the low bid. So motion and second to approve the low bid from ASCO. The $4.3 million number. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Water and sewer. We have a proposal to purchase a pickup from Lamb Motors. A source well contract bid amount of $33,844. Motion and a second to approve 2021 pickup bid from Lamb Motors from a source well bid in the amount of $33,844. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 2021 chemical bid. Majority of that bid is, uh, was a uh, low bid from Hawkins in the amount of $65,610 with one small contract to go to DPC for granular chlorine 
the amount of $2.40 a pound. Entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve. Second to approve the chemical bids that I just that I laid out. Any questions? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. In F3, we have a proposal to approve a notice of public hearing on February 16, 2021 at 6 p.m. for the water treatment plant facility plan. Yeah, this is really just an update. Um, we are working on finalizing that uh, water treatment plant facility plan study. Uh, we hope to finalize that at the 16th um, council agenda. And this publication is really for SRF um, funding. They, uh, they require that we have a public hearing just stating that we are looking at doing this project. And so we did plug in that top dollar, that RO dollar, if we decide to go that way. Um, we have to put the max in there just for the advertisement. So this doesn't hold us, um, th this doesn't hold us to that number. Okay, and entertain a motion to approve the notice of public hearing that we're starting to get into starting blocks for a new water treatment plant. Second. Motion is second to approve as presented. Any questions? All in favor signify by stating aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, any new business? Hearing none, uh, I would entertain a motion to move into executive session at 7.41 p.m. for a potential litigation issue. Second. Motion is second to move into executive session at 7.41 for potential litigation issue. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 